I never would have made it without you. And if you want to look that up, you can go to Psalms 124 and read that Psalms. And that Psalms tells you that it was an accent Psalms. In other words, it was a song that was sung when the people of God would get ready and travel and go to their Mecca meeting. Anybody know what a Mecca meeting is? Oh, Lord have mercy. Anybody know what a conference is? Yeah. See, see, we just changed the name. Back then, they call it Mecca meeting. We just done change it to conferences and all that kind of stuff. Amen. But when they they knew at certain times of the season, they had to go to Jerusalem and worship God. Somebody shout hallelujah. It, it wasn't no excuses. It wasn't no reason why they couldn't go. They understood when that season came, we got to pack our grip and we got to travel to Jerusalem. Don't matter how far, don't matter how we get there, we got to get to Jerusalem. Somebody say amen. amen. We as a people of God, we can't get to no Mecca meeting. We can't barely get you to come to church on Sunday. So let's know a big conference meeting. Uh, I, I don't know about glory, but let me talk about try Jesus, amen. Because most of the time when I go, I got to go by myself, me and my wife. Every now and then we'll get a crew to go, amen. But most of the time, me and my wife going to travel alone. Somebody say, ouch. When you know that you're supposed to go and serve God somewhere in once a year as a group, as a family, as a unit, amen, there is no excuse why we're not getting there. Yes, I understand. We feel like, well, I ain't have no vacation time because you used it for something else, amen, because most jobs gives you at least one week out of the year, amen. You just chose to use that week for other things than the house of the Lord, amen. You chose to use that week one day at a time instead of using it for the whole week because we took a PTO day here, we took a PTO day there there so when it was time for the meeting you had no time so therefore you thought about yourself and not about God so now but now now David understood that they were traveling and they had to go to this meeting amen as people of God as a generation of people we need to do better about congregating with one another to take care of God's business how do you think we get strong if we never come together amen I love the meeting that we come together in November amen but that's not enough amen we cannot change our city by coming together once a year. We cannot change our city by coming together twice a year. We got to work throughout the whole year together to make an imprint that we can begin to change something. Glory be to God. I, 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 was, I was teaching the church on the other night, amen. I think we was dealing with Ruth and, 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 and Naomi, amen. And we came up with this thing about their, their, their welfare system they had back in that day. Somebody said they ain't had no welfare. Yes, they did, amen. Blessed be the Lord. Because the Bible said, well, the planters could not take everything from out of the field. They had to leave some behind that the poor people would be able to glean and together. So that's a governmental system that was set up so the poor people could be fed. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. But check out their welfare system versus what we got. Amen. Our system made us lazy. They gave you the food stamp. They gave you the uh, housing uh, allowances. They gave you everything. And that time, they didn't give it to them. They still had to go out there and work. Amen. It was left there, but you got to get off your can and go out there and pick it up and get it. Amen. See, the government done made us lazy that now we depend on them instead of depending on God. This is why our praise and our worship is not where it should be because we don't feel like we need God like we should. But long as the government is trying to giving us stuff out and handing it to us and what you don't realize, they're really keeping you poor. Amen. Because they're not going to give you enough to make you wealthy. They're not going to give you enough to let you have something. They're going to tell you how much money you can have in your bank account. They're going to tell you everything that you're supposed to do. But you get relaxed. You get comfortable with that. Amen. And then it keeps us as a people down. Amen. We got to get out of that mindset that we got to depend on the government. Yeah. Maybe the government going to get a little hard in the next few years. Yeah. Amen. We're going to have to go back into trusting God that yeah. God is going to what? Take care of us. Yeah. That God is going to be the one that brings us out. Yeah. That it's going to be God no matter what government is saying. God is going to take care of his people. Yeah. It yeah. don't matter who may be in the chair. Amen. My trust is not in them. Oh. Yes. Did I do my part? Yeah. Yes. I cast in my vote. Did my vote necessarily win? No, it did not. But it don't matter who in the chair. Because God says what? Well, he will never leave me or forsake me. So no matter what they try to do or how they try to do it, my trust is in the Lord. So therefore, I got to learn how to what? praise him even harder. I got to praise him even the more. I got to magnify God. I got to thank him for what I'm doing, what I'm going through. Because my God is worthy to be praised. 
we need to understand with Nehemiah, amen. And Nehemiah was a man that had a mentality to worry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it got real quiet then. It got real quiet then. See, see we, we can't build any kind of walls with lazy folks. Oh, come on, talk about it. We can't build any kind of church with lazy folks. We, we, we can't build, see, the wall meant protection back then. We can't build any kind of protection when we're lazy and doing nothing. We, we, we don't testify to nobody. We don't witness to nobody. We don't tell nobody about Jesus unless it's something good that we want to boast about. God done gave us a brand new car. Then we boast in hard. The Lord blessed me. The Lord gave me this car. Next week the car repossessed. God didn't give me no car and it got repossessed the next week. We, we, we have to know what to testify about and what to tell folks about. Tell folks about when you were messed up and you were jacked up right now. And everybody was going to throw the towel and nobody wanted to deal with you. But God stepped in and brought you out. And what they've been through. Yeah. But I'm letting the uh, apostle, let me tell you, I'm not ashamed of my past. Oh, amen. Yeah. I tell everybody, look, I was messed up. Oh, amen. Yeah. I was doing what I wanted to do. And I oh. thought I was right for doing it. But when I got close to Jesus, uh, yeah. and Jesus began to turn things around, yeah. I don't try to shrink back. I don't try to hide it. People come out, well, you don't think you'd be embarrassing your wife? No. Because no. she stood there with me when I was going through the mess. Yeah. She, she the one that prayed for me to get the way I was at. Yeah. So therefore, it needs to be. Somebody. It's gonna bring somebody else out. See, I, don't, I, I don't play these things. I, I don't sit there with my brothers and try to pat them on the back and say, "Man, you got it going on." Boy, you got you two or three of you bad. No, 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 no. You gotta cut that mess out because you gonna find yourself in hell. You got the best thing by your side. You keep messing around, she gonna be gone. But then when she go, you ain't got nobody. Yeah, you don't wanna run to the church and try to tell God that God the enemy meant no, you mess yourself up. Together and cut this mess out about where you went over there to 
Glory Bible. If that's where you're going to stay saved that baby, go to Glory Bible. I just need you to be saved. Everybody ain't going to be saved under my ministry. Everybody don't like the way I teach it. Everybody don't like the way I preach it. But if you like the pastor drinking, get on down there. But be real. Nehemiah was a worker, amen. And he understood that he had an assignment that needed to be done by God, and he wanted to fulfill that assignment, amen. So Nehemiah understood that everything had to be done decency and in order. That's right. See, I got two amen. That's right. See, 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 the folks in the church today want to do stuff the way they want to do it and, and don't want to go to nobody else for no approval, amen. But you can't do what you want to do in the house of the Lord because if you got a shepherd, he's still responsible for the overall of what's going on. So you just cannot go out there and do what you want to do and say what you want to say because you might be saying something that ain't right. They're going to come back to the apostle because if you hear something crazy, the first thing they're going to say, I ain't going over there. That man teaching nonsense like that. I, I don't want to see the fuck you there right there. So, so, so you got to do stuff decently and in order. So Nehemiah understood that the walls were torn down and they need to be rebuilt. Amen. But he understood what? He had a responsibility to the king. Even though it was for the house of the Lord, I cannot just leave my position and go do what I want to do. So, so guess what? I'm going to go and get permission to do the Lord's work. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't need no permission to do the Lord's work. You already got it. The apostle already gave it to you. Jesus already gave it to you. He said, go out and be a witness for me. Amen. So all you got to do is open your mouth. All you got to do is be willing to talk to somebody. Glory be to God. See, but we don't want to do that kind of work for the God. No, glory be to God. Let them do you really want to go here? See, 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 church that became a form of, uh, 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 what is it? What word I'm trying to use? We, 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 we could be seen. We, we, the church is our platform to make us feel like we the movie star. Church is the kind of platform that people can feel like I'm in charge. So, so, so when it comes to the mediocre, the small stuff, you don't want to do that. You don't want to clean the church. You don't want to clean the bathroom. You don't want to witness amen. But pastor's anniversary time, you want to be the MC. You can't MC. you want to be. Everybody ain't no MC. And we try to build a kingdom. How we going to build a kingdom you can't sing and you up here sounding like I don't know what and people sitting out there looking at you turning their head so you can't even see them laughing. I know I'm not going to sing that. But I like my older mothers in the church if possible. I can't sing. I can't play no keyboard. But the mother say, Bishop, you play and sing with the anointing. What? Let me sing some more. They know how to keep that Negro stroked up, boy. I can't play not one song. I'd be on that keyboard just like this. I thought, oh, Bishop sounded good today. But I know. I played the drum one day. And played one song my daughter say. I thought I was getting off. That leg was shaking. They were going. I thought I was playing. My daughter said, mm, 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 mm. But I'm a willing vessel. I'm willing to do whatever needs to be done in the house of the Lord that it can get done. Amen. I ain't trying to be seen. I ain't trying to win the popularity content. God, I just want you to know your work will not be hindered because I'm going to feel it and do what needs to be done. So Nehemiah understood that he had a work to do and he had a responsibility. How many of you know when you're trying to work for the Lord, the enemy going to come against you? Yeah. See, see, the enemy is going to come against you because he don't want the church to progress and go to the point to where God will have it to be. Amen. So therefore, when you start working for the kingdom of God and you start to do some work, everybody coming out of the woodwork. Even the ones you thought was your friend. Even the ones you thought that had your back. You, they, they stroking you up. They building you up. They telling you, yeah, girl, go ahead and do it because they want you to look crazy. They want you to look like you don't know what you're doing. Instead of them trying to help you do it right, yeah, girl, that's a good idea. Yeah, girl, that's good. No goodwill, it ain't no good idea. If they was your friend, they'll say, well, baby, I don't think you want to do that. 
I think you may want to look at it like this here, but no. They want you to get up there and look crazy. So when you look crazy and everybody look at you, they back there talking about, I tried to tell her. I tried. No, you did not. Amen. You wanted them to look bad. That ain't your friend. So Nehemiah understood the enemy is going to come out the woodwork and try to stop the work that he was doing. But he understood his assignment. And when you understand your assignment, can't nobody just walk up to you and tell you that you cannot get it done. The Bible said that Nehemiah made up in his mind. He said, we don't finish this wall if we don't do anything else. He said, so therefore, we're going to work with one hand and we're going to put our weapons in the other hand and we're going to do what we got to do. But we will not stop working. We will not Stop doing what God has called us to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. But I want you to understand tonight that Nehemiah couldn't have built the wall. Glory be to God. Like a, as the psalmist was saying, as they was traveling up the road to go to Jerusalem, amen. They were singing Psalms 124. But I'm here to let you know, Apostle. I don't know what song that you might have sung in this day, but I believe through your path and what you've gone through. You were saying the song I never would have made yeah. without your God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I can't tell your whole story. Yeah. But my God, I know you've been through some stuff. Yeah. I know you had some struggles. Yeah. I know you had some ups and downs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every time yeah. we get ready to travel for the Lord, yeah. we can open our mouth. Yeah. And say, I never would have made it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I never could have made it. Yeah. With Without your Lord, huh? hallelujah. Huh? When we were going through our trials huh? and going through our tribulations, huh? when everybody trying to put their foot huh? down upon your head huh? to keep you from rising up, huh? trying to hold you down, huh? hallelujah. Huh? I can imagine in my mind huh? you were still crying out, huh? Lord, help me, huh? Lord, deliver me, huh? hallelujah. Huh? When you begin to rise, huh? people begin to look. Huh? Hallelujah. They could not believe what was going on in your life. But God was getting ready to move. God was getting ready to bring you out. Hallelujah. You can hear now when God pulled you out of the muck and miry clay. Hallelujah. Your enemies wanted you to stay buried. But somebody had you on their mind. They were praying for you. They were calling out your name. Hallelujah. I know. Because my mom was praying for me. Hallelujah. Praying my God. That's my boy. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy. Lord God pressing down. When he can't get back up. Hallelujah. After a while. You begin to climb out. Of the mud. Miracle, hallelujah. When you used to walk with a little stag, when God cleaned you up, you get a little boldly. I'm no longer staggering, but I'm walking upright, I'm walking tall. You used to slur a little bit, but now I no longer slur, but I don't drink no more. My tongue is slurring in my heavenly language, because God. Has brought me out. He turned me around. I don't know about you, but I was so glad when the Lord saved me. Hallelujah. Look at here now. Now you come up. You on the Lord's side. You begin to reminisce where God brought you from. Hallelujah. And I told you before, I used to be a woman now. I used to be a whole man. I used to do all kinds of stuff. But glory be to God. I was so glad when I fell in love with Jesus. It was so bad, Apostle. I knew I was wrong. Look at here. I wanted to stop so bad. It couldn't stop. I tell the lady, you crazy. You know I got a wife. And you still sitting here trying to make a runaway. But they wouldn't leave. I would tell them I can't come see you. Because I don't have a tag on my vehicle. They come through the drive through Give me the money to buy a tag just to go see them. Hallelujah. Yeah, I had it going on. Hallelujah, Jesus. But I was so glad when the Lord. 
Lord uh, took it out of my mouth. Uh, I was willing uh, to stay home uh, with my own good thing. Uh, I was willing uh, to do what was right. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but when you hear now, uh, you begin to reminisce uh, of where God uh, has brought you from. Uh, and you listen to that song. Uh, look here, Lord. Uh, I never would have made it uh, without you, Lord. Uh, every time uh, I turned around, uh, the enemy uh, was pulling on me. Uh, the enemy uh, was tugging on me. Uh, every time uh, I stepped forward, uh, he'll pull me back. Uh, so God, uh, I know uh, on tonight uh, it was not by uh, my will. Uh, it was not by uh, my power. Uh, but why? Yes, God, it was you that brought me out. I heard the songwriter say, I could have lost my mind. Hallelujah. They used to tell me when I moved over here, the Tampa, Florida, I came from a small town, Fort Pierce. Hallelujah. I met my wife, pretty young thing, slim young thing. The first thing they said, that city woman gon' run you crazy. She gon' run you out of your mind. I got mad. I said, why can't I run her crazy? I know I came from a small town, but I got a big brain that I ain't slow. Hallelujah. But look at here. God picked me up.
going to suit us. And we need to change our mindset and say, God, whatever is going to benefit the kingdom is what I want to do. So, God, if you don't ever bless me to get a lump sum of money, bless me to be able to be a good tither and a good steward so the house of God can be blessed. Lord, help me to get into my word. Help me to get into my word that I can what, witness to somebody. Amen. This, this ain't all about me just being saved because some of you done got saved and you don't care if nobody else gets saved. Oh my God. You feel it because you got the Holy Ghost and you find that tithe and you speaking in tongues. That's all you got to do and you good and forget everybody else. That's selfish. Somebody pray for you. Amen. Amen. To get a breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Somebody pray for you that you'll get a relationship with God. Amen. So you got to what? Pay that for. Amen. You know, they got this thing now where people, you get in line and people, folks paying for your stuff in the van. I ain't never been that fortunate yet, brother. <laughs> I be waiting to stay in line and they say, well, it's already been paid, but it ain't happened to me. <laughs> but I, 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 I pay for it to people. I usually do it for senior citizens. I told you I got problems. I can't see paying stuff for for somebody younger than me. All right. Get out and go to work. Amen. Amen. What's wrong with you now? My God. You know, too much stuff to have been given to you. Yeah. But if it's a senior citizen and I see him up there, I'd be like, I, I got that for her. And they just be smiling. They might have more money than me. I don't know. But what? When you pay it forward, God sees your heart. We got to do the same thing with the gospel. Man, we got to pay the gospel for That's right. We got to stop being selfish and just want to be the center of attraction in the church when, when things got to come off. No, train somebody else to be the center of attraction and you take the right seat. That's right. That's right. I tell people all the time, look, my, 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 my best thing in the church, you know what I do best in the church? I love preaching, but that ain't the best thing I do. I just love it. The best thing I do in the church is serve. Yeah. Yes, amen. That's my favorite thing in the church. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll serve the bishop, I'll serve the apostle, yeah. I'll serve the members, because yeah. God called me to serve right. before he even put me to right. this point. Yeah. I was working in the church before he called me, before he called me to preach. So I enjoy serving. Yeah. I go to the conference, I'm working. I'm not trying to sit up on the front row with the bishop's collar on and just be chilling. Right. I'm back there working behind the scenes, doing whatever needs to be done because that's what he called me to do is to serve because I want to stay humble. Yes. Amen. People will blow your head up and make you think you all of that and then you get outside of yourself and you ain't no good for nobody. All the bishop don't walk in. Uh -oh. yeah. Bishops can't even praise God no more. Oh my God. Because the people don't made them so dignified that they feel like if they go to praising God, there's something wrong with it. No. Uh -huh. They need to see you praising God. That's you right. the leader. Right. You, 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 the, you the head. You should be praising God so everybody else can see how they should be praising God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Truth. That's why it's so hard for me to have adjectives. Thank you, God. Because the adjectives take your Bible. They're supposed to be praying for you and doing all this kind of stuff. I'd be wow. around my Bible and hit the door and I'd be ready to go. <laughs> and he like, I, I told you I got that. I told you I got that. And I said, Dennis, I pull up at the church and he'll come out the door, walk into the car. I'm like, man, it's five steps from here to the door. I could have took this myself. They know, no, Pastor, you got to let us do what we're supposed to do. You come out for our blessing. Man, I, I don't want to get to be here. All right. come on. I want people to see God in me. Yeah. I yeah. want nobody to ever feel like I'm untouchable. Right. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. never been in a big conference meeting when y'all never even get to talk to the bishop. Uh, uh, See, we don't been in them kind of meetings. You can't even touch the bishop. You can't talk to the bishop. He got a big old entourage all around him. If you get close, they think they're a dog on the tech the team pushing you all out the way. I'm about not to be fair. Because you push me again, I might push you back. But this is what we have got, gotten to. We should never be untouchable to the people of God. Who do you think praying for you? Well, he ain't. Mm -hmm. Jesus. If you can't get to him, he definitely ain't praying for you. Right. Come on. Not by your name. Right. Yeah. He might be praying for overall congregation right. of people. Yeah. But he ain't praying for you. My God. Right. If you cannot get to your leader, they can't be praying for you because they don't even know who you are. My God. And they ain't got nothing against TD Jakes. I ain't got nothing against Ann Long. I ain't got nothing against none of them people. Y'all send them all kinds of money. And we talk about that. I bet they praying for me. No, they ain't. Your name in an envelope thrown in the stack with everybody else. All they did was took your money out. My God. 
I can't say that. I ain't true. Know I, mean. I can't get back, so no, I can't say that. There ain't never been that. But let me put this. This is why I see them be done. Let me take their name off it. But this is what I've seen be done from going to big conferences and working in the back house, in the back offices. They take your offering out of there, they don't know who you are. None of that. They just got your name. But this is who you're talking to. Understand, none of us would be where we are without Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. No matter where you are, you may not even be where you are. You may not even be where you because I'm not here. I want to be in God yet. I still got a lot of growth to go. I still got a lot of maturation to do. But what I strive at it every day that God, you allow me to get closer to you, to get connected to you. Because if I feel that I'm insufficient, then imagine what God is thinking. You know why we can't see wonders and signs and miracles? Because we don't have that same relationship that they had back then. Those people pay a price for God to speak to them. Apostle pays a price for God yeah, yeah, to speak yeah, to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I be praying, God speak to me so I can tell somebody something you said. It don't happen. Wow. So if they got that gift, they had to pay a price yeah, to get there to share yeah. that. Oh I tell people what I overheard and tell them. No, Bishop. I done did that before. Uh, you know how y'all pocket down, folks? I listened to the whole conversation. <laughs> Came to church the next day. Oh that situation you was in yesterday. Oh you know God don't want you there. They say, oh, God, he prophesied. No, I didn't run the pocket down. I heard it. <laughs> I don't ever try to pretend something that I'm not. I don't ever try to pretend to be a prophet because God has not ordained me to prophesy to people. If I tell you something, I'm going to tell you the word said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, the word said it, but God said it because yeah. it's through his word. But I'm not prophesying it to you like you want me to prophesy like I'm seeing it right now. Yeah. You know, God televising it through my mind and I'm telling you what the Lord, no, no, I, I, don't, I don't do that. Oh, yeah. But now you pocket down, I'm listening to that conversation. <laughs> I'm going to tell you just what was said. <laughs> And then you think God showing me everything. And I'm just sitting there smiling and I'm laughing to myself. So be careful with the pocket down. <laughs> Nehemiah had a job to do. You have a job to do. You have to make up in your mind. And this is for every child of God. You got to make up in your mind. You're not going to allow anybody to stop you from doing what the Lord has called you to do. Amen. Glory by him. You're nowhere near finished. Truth be told, y'all should have been out of this building by now. You should have been out of this building by now. Because I know, and I haven't talked to a person, but I know his vision had him out of this building by now. But guess what? Somebody stop working. Wow. And when we stop working, we hinder Amen. where God want to take us. Try Jesus. No reason supposed to be still in our building. Amen. But almost everybody stopped working. So when we stop working, we don't go where we're supposed to go. We don't get the things that God has ordained for us to get because you came down from doing the work wow. of the Lord. You gotta open your mouth. First of all, you gotta start living the life. Let me back that up. See, we can testify because we ain't living the life to testify. You can't tell people about Jesus and cuss them out tomorrow. I know Glory Bible don't curse. Some of us that try Jesus still curse. Because all of us ain't saved yet. I'm just telling you the truth. All of us ain't saved yet, so we still curse. If not every day, every now and then. But we're working on it. We working on it. So, so I'm like, Lord, Bible, y'all don't have that problem. Y'all don't curse over here. Y'all don't talk about folks. Y'all don't bite back. Y'all just love God. each other every day. Ooh, speak it, speak it. So <laughs> if that was true, Amen. who was it that stopped working? My God. Uh -oh. Come on, right. Right. Uh -oh. Somebody stopped 
working. And you have to go back to work. If you don't work your job, you don't pay your bills. Or if you don't have your job, you're limited on what you can do. Amen. Amen. We should not be limited in the kingdom of God. Because they say he's the God over all things. He has all power. So we should not be limited in his household. We're limiting ourselves. As one wise bishop told me one time. Because you know it's always a struggle to raise money in the church. People would always say, well, I can't give because I'm on a limited income. And his answer was, if your income limited, you limited. My God. Because it don't have to be. Yes. Whatever your income is, there's always something you could do to go out and make yes. more Amen. if you desire. Amen. But Amen. we have come in a day and age where people ain't got no hustle. Mm. They do Perfect. not want to work. They do not want to do anything. I'm going to tell you this, and we're going to get ready to raise the apostle a great offering before y'all start running out the door. Look, my daddy taught us at an early age, we had to work and take care of our household. At the age of 12, my daddy made us start working. We had to pick fruit on the weekend because that's what he did. When I got to be 13, 14, he taught us how to drive tractors and everything else because he did grow work. When I got to be 15, I had two jobs. I worked with my daddy in the summer from 5 in the morning to 5 in the evening. I would come home and go to Kentucky Fried Chicken from 6 in the evening to 12 o'clock at night at 15. Wasn't no such thing as child labor law back then. Because they just work you like a mule. Now y'all got to work 30 hours and you got to get a break and you got to get all this that kind of stuff. But but you limit yourself. And now these kids feel like they just entitled. They want everything to be given to them. And y'all ain't meaning but y'all giving it to them. Y'all giving it to them. And you know they feel entitled. I ain't going to get this for you. Here you go, baby, because I don't want you to be upset. What? <laughs> upset didn't matter in our house. You're going to be upset. You're going to get some spankings. You're going to get everything else that comes along with being a child. My wife tell them all the time, you know, the Bible says a child ain't nothing but a servant. You're a slave. <laughs> That's what she used to tell me. That means you do what I say when I say it when I tell you to do it. And they would go and do it. Now they turn just look at you and make one face and sit down and you'd be like, I do it. What? We gotta get stronger in the house of the Lord and cut out all these limitations. The house of God can go beyond measure. And the only way it can do it is if we step in and get the job done. Not just glory Bible, not just try Jesus. We got to come together in unity and work together to make a difference in our community. And we got to work one community at a time. And we got to work glory Bible community first. We all need to be at that. Especially for men. Do you know we draw men in numbers? You can't really draw men one person at a time. Because we're not the kind of people. One man go talk to a man and be like, okay, all right, whatever, whatever. But if it's, if it's a group of them, we tend to follow the group. Okay. Yeah. Now, women is different. You can talk to women one-on-one -on -one and they'll get it. But can you imagine if all of us was flooding this neighborhood? My God. And people see that, they're going to want to see what's going on. Yeah. Well, they got that many people going all over there. What are they doing? Yeah. Let us go check it out. Maybe on that Sunday we have to come together so they'll think we one big church so when they come they don't see just two or three of us. Yeah, right. Maybe they had all the people in that community they were two or three people in that church they yeah. were put on the front. Yeah. No, sometimes we may have to say okay, we're going to come fellowship so when they come they'll see a whole crowd of people yeah, and they yeah. encourage the folks. we got to start thinking out yeah, of yeah. the box to get Amen. the job done. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to leave that alone. But tonight is an anniversary night. 